by placing them under his mattress. Lincoln was with Coke just enough. He will not spend a bad cent. As we say in Tobago, he loved to exercise. He boasts about his team and how many push-ups he could do. Six up push-ups and walk in were some of his favorite exercises. I can tell, see, I can still see his massive white teeth as he smiled. He loved to play, play with. He loved to talk about cricket and politics. His voice could be heard now. The rest sometimes during some conventional topic. Now his voice.
my family in Christ. I must first say condolences to you all. You know, death is no respecter of person. Because the only man who tell death, stand still, and speak with authority is our brother in the Bible, which is Paul. And Paul tell them to stand still and began to write a letter. And he write, I have kept the faith, I have run the race, and I know that there is a crown awaits for me in glory. O death, where is thy sting? And O grave, where is thy victory? Brethren, the reason why I ask you to read the 23rd Psalm is because it said that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Some of us may say the Lord is my shepherd, I will always want. But what does this mean? This means that once you are serving a mighty God in the beauty of holiness, once you are serving a mighty God in feeling and in fear and in loving gratitude, once you are serving a mighty God in spirit and in truth, He's going to supply all your needs. Amen? Amen. And that's the reason why when I saw writer Psalm that my shepherd will supply my needs. Jehovah is his name. A past that flesh makes me be beside the living stream. And Jesus, being our good shepherd, is going to lay down his life for his sheep. And I come down in the 23rd Psalm and said that we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And brethren, you know, whether we burn, cremate, or whether we bury on that great judgment day, he's going to bring our wandering spirit back when we forsake his ways and will lead us for his mercy's sake in paths of truth and grace. And you know, John chapter 14, it said that let not your heart be troubled. Today so many hearts have been troubled. Today some are sick, some are sad. Today some have lost the love they had. Some were never taught to love. Some in the bed of affliction, which is the hospital, and some in the lonesome graveyard, which is the cemetery. And the reason is because God is no respecter of person. Jesus said, I'm going to pull down the mighty from their seats and I will exalt the humble and me. I will fill the hungry with good things and the rich will send them empty away. And the scripture said, let the Jehovah be troubled. You know? Which means that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Want the Lord is your shepherd. You know? You will not want anything because he already give you all that you need to get. He already give you life and life more abundantly. He has already given you the opportunity, you know, to wake up this morning. And that's the reason why when we wake up in the morning and we feel the breath of God, we must say, thank you, Jesus. Because many did not get that opportunity you know, to wake up to see another day. And Jesus said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. But a lot of people did not understand what Jesus meant by that. You know, sometimes we read it, but we don't understand what we read it or what someone is reading for us. But sometimes we might hear a song play in the music. And according to the music, you know, we might be able to hear and what is what, what the person is singing about. So the songwriter, when they heard that a lot of people did not understand Jesus, when he said that in my father's house there are many mansions, and many did not understand, the songwriter sang, In my father's house there are many
You know, it's water baptism. You know, when some people hear spirit, you know, the first thing some people come to some people like this, oh, we yeah. are. But Jesus said, I am a spirit. And they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And in Romans chapter 8 said that there is no condemnation now to them who in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but who walk after the spirit. And coming down to that very same Romans chapter 8, Jesus said, I am not dealing with you, the flesh, but I am only dealing with the spirit, which is the spirit of mighty God that dwell within you. Amen? Amen. So according to St. Matthew chapter 3, one day our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Son of the true and living God, the great Yeshua, Jesus went to his cousin 70 miles and said, John, I indeed need water baptism. But John knew that Jesus is the reader of hearts and the savior of minds who sees and knows all things. John knowing that Jesus is the son of the true and living God. John has seen and knows that Jesus can perform all the four types of miracles. So John looked to Jesus and said, My master, I'm not even worthy enough to let the last of your feet. But Jesus said, John, do this now, for thus the coming of us to fulfill all righteousness. And there were John forbid Jesus, and John baptized, immersed Jesus. And a voice from heaven said, that this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. So Jesus baptized an example for you and I follow. Version according to St. John chapter 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a ruler. One night, Nicodemus went to Jesus and said, Rabbi, which means master. He said, we know that thou art a teacher, come from God. For all these miracles that you do, no man can do except God be with him. Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But you know, sometimes you're telling someone something and they don't understand. So what will happen? They will start to get angry, they will start to get annoyed, they will start to get ignorant because they don't confuse, they don't understand what they're speaking about. So they can even ask Jesus, how can a man be born? When he's already old, can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? But Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Because what is born of the flesh, like this, is flesh. And what is born of the spirit, is spirit, marvel, I say unto you, you must be born again. And the wind blew it, when listed, but they'll kind of tell us some devil whether it cometh or goeth, and so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So, brethren, some of you all may ask yourself a question. This is our loved one funeral. So, why is the, the pastor or the archbishop telling us about water baptism? It's simply because. Baptism is very important for you and I because Jesus has done this as an example for you and I to follow. Baptism is a death unto sin and a new birth unto all righteousness. So brethren, I want to tell you all that there are three things. It has the body, it has the soul, and it has the spirit. And the body is the flesh, you know, to communicate one another from a power point of view. But be careful, because the Bible said that a carnal minded man is enmity against God. But when you are spiritually minded, God gives you a special gift, which is eternal 
life. So the body is the flesh. And then come the soul. What is the soul? In the beginning, when God created man in his own image and likeness, he beat breath. And the man nostrils and they became a living soul. And the spirit is the breath of God. Because God has used his breath and breathed into man nostrils to bring them to life for them to become a living soul. Amen? Amen. And that's the reason why, brethren, that when we all die, our loved ones have to dispose of our body. Why? Because our body is no longer functional. According to Psalm 39, it says that we have eyes but cannot see. We have ears but cannot hear. Nose but cannot smell. Mouth but cannot speak. Tongue but cannot taste. Heart but cannot feel. You know? And this is the reason why our loved one after this goes of our body. Our soul goes to wait for judgment day. Because remember, according to the Apostle Creed, when we say that I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth coming down, it said that on the third day, He rose again, which is Jesus. He rose again from the dead. And He's going to come again to judge both the living and the dead. So which means that there are a judgment day. And the Spirit is the breath of God, which goes back to Almighty God, because God gave it and God takes it. So brethren, I want to tell you all, let not your heart be troubled, because the way goes brighter and brighter still, and all the way along is Jesus. He's mighty to save, and he's strong to deliver. You see, your loved one, Linton George, have a privilege and an opportunity with Almighty God that you and I do not have. Because the scripture said that the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then everyone else shall be caught up. But in order to be caught up, they must take out the mortal, which is the flesh, which is the body, in order to pick up immortality, which is the spirit, which is the spirit of Almighty God that dwells within you. Amen? Amen. So, brethren, I want to tell you all that, you know, across the bridge, there's no more sorrow. Across the bridge, there's no more pain with your loved one. The sun will shine across the waters and will never be unhappy again. And that's the reason why this song right now sang it. I sing it across the bridge. There's no more sorrow. Across the bridge. There's no more pain. The sun will shine across the That means that he already knew 
what had transpired with his best friend Lazarus. But when Jesus went to the tomb where Lazarus body had been laid, you know, one of Lazarus' sister, Mary was so upset with Jesus. She didn't know to see or to hear about Jesus because she was so upset how Jesus never came before Lazarus died. But the other sister Martha went to hear what Jesus has to say. Jesus said, Martha, where's your other sister Mary? Go and get her and come. And they both went to Jesus. And they began crying and weeping. And said, Lord, if you were here, our brother Lazarus would have never died. And Jesus began to weep. The reason why Jesus began to weep is because he realized that they all had losing faith in him. The reason why Jesus began to weep is because he realized that they all had losing trust in him. The reason why Jesus had weep is because he realized that they all had losing confidence in him. But Jesus looked up to the heavens and said, Father, I know that thou art with me always. He never said, I feel. He never said, I think. He said, I know that thou art with me always, but for the sake of thy people. And Jesus looked to the tomb and began to speak with authority and began to command Lazarus to come forth. And Lazarus once again awoke from a strong sleep and began walking out of the tomb. And his very own families and friends began running away from him. So I have a question. If I decided to open the gospel of Linton George, you know, and I whisper something in his ears, because the, the Bible said that in the beginning was the word, and the word is God, and made flesh and goes amongst us. So if I open the box and, and say, um, George, Dear yeah, boy, wake up, arise, and just decide to get up now. I wonder how many of us are going to remain sitting inside of here. You know? Because many would have run out the door. Because they all knew that he was lying here with no breath and no strength and power of his own. And that just goes to prove that what is impossible with man is possible with God. And that's the reason why. You have like yourself, arise, my soul, arise. Shake off your dirty fears. The bleeding sacrifice in my heart appear. Before I throw, I shall stand, and my name is written on his hand. And that simply means that Jesus, on that great judgment day, Jesus is going to command every single one. Who are, who, who are dead, you know, to arise your soul. That means wake up, you know, get up, shake off your guilty fears, shake yourself from your drowsy sleep. The bleeding sacrifice, which is the Lamb of God that takes over the sin of the world, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In my heart, He appeared, but today, you know, we are gathered here on Linton George's behalf. So in his half, we have, we all appear. Before I throne, I was dead, you know, with no good ever should in my own. But now I surely stand, and I know that my day is written in his hand. So brethren, the moral of the story is to have faith in God. You know, according to Psalm 125, they that trust in the Lord shall be as happy from Zion, which abided and cannot be moved. You know? So, the most thing about life is after everything you work so hard to accomplish, after everything you fight and struggle to get, the house, the car, the land, everything. You know? But, when that great judgment day comes, we can't go with anything. There's a song that goes like this. You can't go to heaven with a pardon man. You can't go to
Where's the son of the true and living God? I, as Bishop Mugabe here, do commit you, let that judge body to the Lord. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, water to water, fire to fire. Dust we came, and dust we shall return. Will labor Lord spend and be spent? It's a joy to do the master's will, the sister will, the master will, and you let the judge must to have the same. At this time, you will be seated. At this time, we would like to go to the last and final hymn for this service. When the road is full up yonder, I'll be there. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and sad, when the Savior's foot shall gather over on the other shore, and the road is called up yonder.